Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up to date it's another locomotive from EFE Rail. This year I'm making a conscious effort to be more polite about the locomotives that I think are terrible. So the most I'm willing to say about the last EFE rail locomotives I looked at is that I didn't like them very much. And if you want to hear a more candid explanation of my feelings towards them, I will include the link to one of them up there. But be warned, protective clothing is highly recommended. It's designed to hide the fact that I'm actually triggered and I feel like I've never been ripped off this badly before. Given my experiences of EFE rail products in the past, any sane person would probably say I'm not buying from that brand again, and a lot of you people have made that decision, I know. But the thing with me is that I buy these locos to review them, that's what I do for a living, and so that having bad experiences is really no reason to stop buying from a particular brand. After all, a bad loco can still be reviewed, I mean, you can still do everything with it in terms of a review, and in fact I feel that if models from a certain brand tend to be bad quite often, that's all the more reason for me to keep buying them, to review them, and show you guys what they are like. There's also another reason why I'm going to continue to look at some EFE Rail branded stuff, and that's because the models are produced by a number of different manufacturers. It is a Backman brand, EFE Rail is a Backman brand, but I'm not sure how much, if any, of the EFE Rail stuff is actually manufactured by Backman. The steam locos that I've looked at already, I understand that they were manufactured by Kerno. Whereas today's locomotive, which is a diesel, and it is this diesel, the Class 35, as I understand it, is manufactured by Helgen. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking, and I'm thinking it too, but it's really important not to draw any conclusions about this until we've seen the model and had a chance to find out what this is like. But for the record, yes, I am incredibly curious. I'm curious to see the result of the combination of EFE Rail's pricing and Helgen's quality. I'm certainly very, very curious. Speaking of pricing, the RRP for this model right here is £159.95, which is obviously right up there with modern diesels, even though I'm pretty sure the design and tooling of this model dates back several years. And I managed to pick this one up from a retailer for a bit more reasonable price of £135.99, even though now they are a little bit cheaper even than that. So if you do decide to buy one of these, do shop around and hopefully you can get a decent-ish price. I don't know at the moment whether that is a decent price or not. There's another, there's yet another reason why I want to look at this Class 35. The reason being that Helgen have more recently announced an upgraded version of the Class 35, and it's unclear exactly what the upgrades are. I do know that they include uh, an updated DCC decoder socket, so the new ones are going to have a 21 pin one, I believe. And I believe there's something happened to the lighting. It sounds as though it's got sort of directional lighting and interior lighting and such. Uh, but apart from that, I don't know. So that raises questions. I mean, does this thing have lighting? What DCC socket does this have? I'm going to be looking really closely at this model to find out what about it could be upgraded. And then what I might do is buy one of the new upgraded Class 35s and see whether those things that I've identified have actually been upgraded. And you would certainly hope so, because the new Class 35 from Helgen is quite a lot more expensive by almost 20%. So the RRP of the new one is going to be £189.95 and it's going to be available to customers uh, from retailers from about £161.46. So much more expensive than this, but that loco is for another day. Today we've got the existing EFE Rail Class 35 manufactured by Helgen. Let's get stuck in and let's see how it works. All right, so I have never tried a Helgen Class 35. This will be my first time trying one. I've heard a lot about them, but I've never tried one in the flesh. The only 35 I've got is a really old Hornby one with a Ringfield motor, so presumably this will be a huge upgrade from that. The only thing I do know about this is that as quite an old model, it does seem relatively expensive, but that we will have to judge later on. As you can see, looking through the front of the box, I've gone with the Brunswick Green Class 35, and I'm not an expert by any means, obviously, on the Class 35, but as I understand it, 
that is more or less in original condition. I think this is one of the first, if not the first, livery that these received. And that's cool. I do like things in sort of original guise where possible, so that's nice. Let me show the end of the box then. So this is the version I've got specifically. It's E84001. It's a class 35 high mech and it is D7005 in the BR green. Oh, and this does have an eight pin DCC socket inside it. So that is one of the things that Helgen have said that they are upgrading uh, for the next version of this, which presumably will be coming out sometime within the next year or two. Uh, we'll just have to wait and see on that. Anyway, there's nothing really on the back of the box to read. This is about EFE rail and it's probably Probably the same uh, blurb that we've seen before so let's get this out and let's take a look now I have to say the box feels pretty heavy already so if this is like other Helgen locos I've looked at at the very least it's pretty weighty and should be a decent hauler the packaging looks pretty good doesn't it there's uh, sort of foam blocks at either end the loco looks like it's wrapped in plastic and there's this sort of uh, rubbery plasticky tape over the inside of the packaging uh, presumably to stop uh, the packaging damaging the loco so yeah it looks looks pretty good from that point of view now let's take a look at the instructions here so this is quite interesting it isn't all sort of helgen branded as you'd expect so it looks as though this has been reproduced for efe rail so the highlights from the first page here is this part here. It says there's a powerful five pole motor inside and also a heavy die cast chassis. So those are good features, definitely. And I do like that this seems to have a five pole motor rather than a three pole because they tend to offer better performance. Uh, you've got buffer beam accessories here. Let's see. It says the buffer beam molding is supplied with a number of locating holes for separate detail parts enabling the model to be fully detailed in this area. Please be aware that the fitting of these parts may interfere with the operation of the tension lock couplings. Now that is a fascinating development because I think every single Helgen Loco or more or less every single Helgen Loco I've received in the past has had the buffer beam detail pre-fitted which has indeed fouled the couplings and stopped the Loco from working properly. So have Helgen decided not to do that anymore? Or is that just something that the EFE rail stuff is going to do? But sure enough, it does seem as though none of that detail is fitted to the buffer beams. So that is another tick. Yeah, I would much rather it be supplied separately and uh, the model work properly straight out of the box. Okay, snowplow accessory. This sounds pretty cool. For the benefit of modelers who wish to represent further fitments that have appeared on some locomotives, we've also supplied the following additional part. This can be fixed as shown in the diagram. So customizability seems spot on so far. You've then got the section about DCC decoder fitting. Yeah, you can see the eight pin socket there. And then I'm not sure what this is. This is just a nice drawing, I suppose. Uh, it's quite nice to look at, I guess. And then on the back, spare parts and warranty. So nothing too much to go on there. All right, so that's that seems pretty good. So far, I'm quite impressed with the way that this has all been set out. And good Lord, look at this. Let's, <laughs> let's see what's inside the accessories bag then. Are you ready for a 35 minute ramble? Right, so crikey. So it's all on a sprue, interestingly enough. And I can see a number of details. You've got the screw link coupling there. Obviously, though, that is just a moulded piece. It's not a piece that is actually sort of movable and usable. And it does look a bit chunky compared to what you'd expect on a modern loco. But then again, it's nice to have it rather than not have it. You've got, yeah, all of the buffer beam details described. There are the snow plows that you can fit if you want to. They look quite nice and fine. Uh, I can see vacuum pipes and there does appear to be some uh, NEM couplings inside there for you to fit if desired. And uh, I assume that means that there won't be any couplings fitted to the loco in the box. So I will have to go into that and get the couplings in a little while. Hopefully they won't all be warped and bent like in one of the last Helgen Locos I looked at. That was annoying. Right, let's see then. Let's open this up, take a look at the finish first of all, and then I'll lift it up and see what the weight seems like. Great attention to detail here in the packaging. Look at all of this tape on here. A nice sort of foam padded tape everywhere. Every point of contact on the Loco really has that. So I'm not expecting to see any damage. And then it's wrapped in this plastic wrap so surprisingly good quality. All right, so there we have it. And the finish doesn't look too bad, actually. It's not the greatest I've seen in the world, but it certainly isn't completely flat. There is a fair bit of satin gloss to this. 
Obviously, the weight is very good. This is a very, very weighty model, which is great. But the thing that really stands out is the decoration. This is a beautifully decorated loco. I'm not sure exactly how old the tooling for this loco is, but the decoration, the, the standard of the decoration is so high that the loco doesn't look dated at all from this sort of distance. Obviously, I'll have to look more closely in a second. And I suppose, if anything, that's when the model will start to look a little bit dated, if that is the case. But we'll do that in just a moment. For now, though, let's have some history on the Class 35s in real life, and then we'll take a closer look at this loco. The British Rail Class 35 was also known by the nickname Hymec or Hymex. They got this nickname as a result of their hydraulic transmission units, which were manufactured by a company called Mackaydro. And of course, putting the two words together produced the word Hymec. The Class 35 was introduced in 1961 when the first of 101 examples was built for the western region of British Railways. The design was intended to meet demand for a lightweight but moderately powerful fleet of diesels for light passenger work and also freight duties. The Hymec liveries were quite interesting. I mean, the first ones had quite complex, unique liveries in the BR Brunswick green, as you can see with my model. And these had the classic green stripe, which is very hymec y isn't it? And also the grey roof. They later had the yellow warning panels added at each end. And then this was followed by a very handsome BR blue scheme for some examples, not all, from 1965. Withdrawal of the class began in 1971 as, unfortunately, it was deemed non-standard and therefore too inefficient to maintain. By 1975, the final withdrawal had been made and only four examples now remain under preservation. So there she is, my new EFE Rail Class 35 up close and personal for you. And there's some fantastic news here and that is that this model is surprisingly, shockingly high quality. The build quality is absolutely fabulous, as you can see, it's put together really, really nicely. The decoration is really precise and crisp, and I can't fault it. Uh, yeah, it's just completely unlike a lot of the Helgen Locos I've looked at in the past. I don't know if they've put a special effort in because it's part of the EFE rail range, I don't know, but yeah, seriously, the build quality is fantastic. And it's very weighty, of course. It weighs in at exactly 500 grams, which is an awful lot of weight for a loco of this size. That's more than Backman's LMS 10,000 locomotive, which was obviously a much, much larger model. And it's even far more than the Hornby Hush Hush for the steam lovers out there, which obviously was a gigantic steam locomotive. So yeah, overall, first impressions, very, very impressed. There is a downside though, and that is that this model is extremely simple. And this is an old model, it dates back at least 10 years. I found posts referring to the Helgen Class 35 from 2012, so it's at least 10 years old, possibly quite a lot more. And the level of detail definitely shows it. Now, this is not a problem per se, because I personally think that simpler, older models certainly have a place in this market for those who obviously aren't willing to spend the money on very expensive new tooled locomotives, provided that the simplicity of the model is reflected in the price. And that is the problem, unfortunately, because with this Class 35, this is priced as you'd expect a modern, recently tooled, fairly new model to be priced. For instance, the brand new Backman 24-1 cost me only £16 more than this, and that was a new tooled locomotive for last year. It was much more detailed than this, and that was you know, a Backman priced loco that only got three star for value for money. And in terms of RRP, this is only £10 cheaper than one of Acura Scale's new Class 37s, which not only are much larger locomotives than this, they obviously are going to have a much higher level of detail and a much higher specification. So I think that is really, really unfortunate because this is a gorgeous model. It's really nicely put together. And overall, while the level of detail is not amazing, it's certainly passable, isn't it? So this would have made a really great lower level model that's dead affordable. And yet that has been spoiled because it's been greedily priced, I feel. It's priced as though it was a much more modern, super detailed loco when unfortunately it isn't. 
So let's go into what about this is relatively simple. Well, as you can see, the bodywork is quite basic. Most of the detail is just molded, and that goes for the grills, which do have a lack of depth to them, let's be honest, compared with more modern locomotives, like the Acura scale ones that we've seen photos of, that do have the separately fitted etched grills. Yeah, they look a lot better, don't they? The grill on the top of the loco actually looks fairly decent, even though it is part of the molding, I believe. If you look at it directly down though, you can see that there has been some sort of issue with the decoration there because some of the grey paint has gone down between the gaps in the grill, so that has spoilt the illusion. And also there is no fan underneath there of any kind, which is unfortunate. This loco just has plastic buffers, as you can see, so they're not the most realistic, and the buffers are not sprung, as you can see, no, unsprung buffers. Although interestingly, the new upgraded Class 35, on Hatton's website at least, is described as having sprung buffers, so maybe that will be an improvement. The bogey detail looks reasonably coarse, doesn't it? Not very much in the way of separately fitted parts here, most of it is just a part of the moulding. And inside the cabs there's very little in the way of painted detail. There is detail there, but it's not picked out, so it doesn't look the most realistic in the world. Although, to be fair, the seats and such have been picked out in a sort of red leather colour, I guess it is, uh, which does look pretty good. Details such as the lamp irons are just a part of the moulding and they're just quite feebly painted black on the front but not on the sides, so they're not really that convincing. And there are quite a few places where the moulded detail isn't the most effective. I mean, these doors, if you look at them from the right angle, they almost disappear, the moulding is so soft. So it's certainly not a super detailed locomotive, but like I say, overall it looks fantastic because the decoration is wonderful for a start. So the finish is pretty good, it's not astonishing or anything, but if this were cheaper it would definitely be more than adequate. You can see that sort of lime green stripe along the bottom is incredibly precise and crisp, it looks very good. And of course there's a lot of printed detail along that section as well, so the complexity in the decoration is definitely there. You've got the British Railways crest, that's the late crest there. Again, absolutely nothing wrong with that, it looks fantastic. The windows on the side, as well as some of the grills, those have been outlined in the sort of aluminium covered paint, which again looks really, really good and crisp. The cabs, I mean, look, there's just no paint bleed around this white area of the cabs. Looks really, really impressive, does that. And you've got small details on the doors, for instance, like the door handles, which have been picked out in the paint. Not separately fitted, of course, but they do look pretty decent having been picked out. And around the cabs, of course, there are quite a few separately fitted metal handrails, and this is one quality feature, at least. To be honest, they do look reasonably refined. They don't look as chunky as you might expect. You've got quite a few of those, as you can see. And you've even got separately fitted wipers. Again, that is an example of a nice modern feature. They are a little bit chunky, perhaps. If you look at photos of the real thing, they obviously look quite a lot finer, but not a huge deal. And then up on top of the cab, you've got the little separately fitted horns, which have been glued in place, but there's not a huge amount of glue visible there. Now, looking at this loco from the outside, I would guess that this does have working lighting. I mean, they look like they could be real lenses, don't they? They could just be there to make the model look more realistic. Like I say, the new loco is advertised with new directional lighting, which suggests that the old version doesn't have that but I guess we'll just have to find out when it runs. If it doesn't have directional lighting though, or lighting of any kind, that will be another severe knock for the level of detail, particularly at this extremely expensive price point. The buffer beams don't look quite as good as they would normally on a Helgen Loco because they haven't had the full separately fitted detail applied, but overall I think that was the right decision, and in terms of user friendliness that means that you can put this Loco straight on the track, you can bung some couplings into it, and you can expect the Loco to work and couple to rolling stock, hopefully, without derailing because there's all that detail in the way. So even though the model's not quite as realistic as a result, and the factory have had to do less work to produce the Loco, overall I think that is a positive for this Loco. And quite interestingly, you can see these little white painted tanks, which are part of the NEM pocket. So that's a fascinating little bit of design. Hopefully those NEM pockets will actually hold the couplings properly on this model, so that they're level and so that they couple to other pieces of rolling stock properly. Here's a quick look at some of the detail up on the roof of the Loco. There are one or two nice details up there, particularly if you look down these holes, you can see a sort of mesh 
almost like a grill texture down at the bottom of those, which is quite impressive if it catches your eye. So yeah, overall, it's a great looking Loco. The level of detail is okay, but simple by modern standards. And the fact that that isn't reflected in the price is a real pity, if you ask me. But there's a lot of pluses here. Obviously, the model looks decent. The quality is second to none. It's been incredibly well put together, which actually helps to sell the illusion here. If this was a simpler loco and the build quality was horrendous, then it would certainly come off a lot worse, wouldn't it? But overall, yeah, it's looking pretty decent. So let's get this down onto the track. We'll do a performance test and then take a look at the mechanism and hopefully everything will check out there as well. Okay, so there she is, the very good looking Helgen Class 35. Oh, sorry, I keep saying Helgen. EFE rail, <coughs> class 35, down onto the track. And the initial performance test and running in have been conducted and filmed, so I will show you those in just a second. The next job though was to take a look at the innards to see what makes this loco tick, and that's what I'm gonna show you right now. In summary, it's disappointing really given the price. It is a very typical Helgen mechanism, but unfortunately it is puzzlingly poor given how much this loco cost. So as is the case with quite a lot of Helgen locos, this seems to have been designed to be very cheap and easy to assemble at the factory, and consequently not very user-friendly to service. For instance, all of these parts are just clipped together without any screws at all, which is not a very long-lasting solution, is it? So to access the bogies for maintenance and cleaning purposes is quite convoluted, but when you finally do get the base off, you can see that we are just running on a plastic chassis here. The main chassis block of the Loco is obviously heavy die cast, and that's where a lot of the weight comes from. But the bogey chassis themselves that hold the wheels and the gears, those are just made of plastic. And as you can see, there are no bearings on the axles. Not a huge deal, of course, because it's smooth metal on smooth plastic, but a quality premium feature at this quality premium price would have been the proper bearings on ideally a die cast chassis. As you can see, there is also a lot of gears inside here. I can count eight, and those are just the ones visible. They could produce quite a bit of drag, and maybe if the slow speed isn't quite as good as you might expect for a fire-pole motor, that could be a reason. Maybe that's a slight bit of foreshadowing there. As you can also see, though, there are pickups going to each wheel, standard copper pickups which touch the backs of the wheel. Now again, when it comes to body removal, this has definitely been optimised for cheap, easy assembly at the factory, but it hasn't been designed for quality, so again, you've got no screws holding the body off, and it's difficult to remove the body with your hands because there are four lugs, the four sort of clips that you've got to undo, so I use the old glue spreader trick to get the body off. And the chassis that comes out is a very heavy chassis because it's made of metal, but there are quite a few strange and disappointing features on this. The first one is this, a bulb. So yes, the model has lights, but this is a bulb. It's not an LED, which works well at all voltages. It is a bulb, which is just hideously outdated technology. And I will spoil this very slightly for you. These bulbs are almost useless. You can just about notice the lights working when the Mloco is at 100% speed. If you're looking for it, that is the best you get. So my question is, why was this Loco so expensive if it's got this kind of technology inside it? The EFE range is recent. Uh, the EFE rail range was announced in 2020, so this locomotive was released since then. My question is, why are they waiting until now to give us presumably LEDs and proper directional lighting with interior lighting and such? It just doesn't seem right, really, does it? So they've released this within the last two years, 160 quid RRP, or £159.95 to be exact, and then less than two years later, they come along again and say, right, well, thank you for your money. Now, do you want us to fix the loco? Sure, we'll do that, but it will cost you around 20% more now at £189.95. And then, yes, maybe the loco will have the features that it should have had two years ago for 160 quid. It's just not a great attitude towards customers, is it really? Anyway, here is the eight pin socket. I mean, again, slightly outdated, but this doesn't have no LED lighting to control, so it doesn't really matter, does it? And then underneath the PCB, you've got this very, very large motor, which has fitted to it two massive flywheels. Now, I like flywheels. I like a chunky flywheel. I think that's a good quality feature. And I think the fact that there is two massive ones in here definitely shows good intent. 
but I'm going to go ahead and say that two massive flywheels is too much for this model. It's too much for the motor to turn, not to mention all those massive gears which also add to the drag at the low speed. And indeed, you will see in a moment just how this affects the slow speeds of the Loco. It's just too much. I think one of those would easily do the job. And then the gauging doesn't seem too bad, but it is significantly under gauge. Obviously, the double O gauge association say that 14.4 is the ideal back to back. And this is at 14.07 on every axle except one, which was 14.1 something, I think it was but that doesn't seem to have caused any problems. So the insides of this Loco, as is quite often the case, they are not befitting of a Loco of this price tag, particularly when you compare it to what Backman and Hornby to an extent and other manufacturers uh, produce for that sort of money. Anyway, rant over, let's now move on to the performance test, which I shot a little bit earlier. Okay, let's try the first performance test then. Now, the one thing I'm really interested in is something that you're probably not that interested in, and that is whether or not this Loco has lights on it. Obviously, you will have just seen, but at the moment, I still don't know. Personally, whether or not this has lights will make a big difference towards whether or not this is a ripoff. So, let's give this some juice for the first time, set it forwards, and let's give it some power and see. All right, so it works, but I cannot see any lights working. <laughs> you know, I can't tell. Let me hold it still and give it some juice. There we are, that's 50% speed on, off, on, off, 100%. Ah, right, so the, there are lights but they are ridiculously dim, like seriously, 100% speed, and you can barely see them. Let's run past at 100%. You tell me if you see the lights as it goes past. Are you ready? 100%. <laughs> barely, barely. Um, they do seem to be somewhat directional, I think. Oh, I mean, I'll just have to wait myself then <laughs> until the... Uh, until I strip this down and have a look what's inside. But it does seem to have lights, but they are ludicrously naff. But I have allowed that to distract me from the actual performance, so let's take a look at that. I have to say, this is remarkably smooth, isn't it? I mean, really, really smooth. Uh, I assume there's a big flywheel inside here, because if I cut it out at 50% speed in front of you, ready, three, two, one, cut the power, it slows down nice and gradually, so that is something. And the whole the whole performance really is super smooth. The acceleration, the deceleration, really, really beautifully smooth. So performance-wise, it's looking really, really strong. Uh, let's just try a crawl. This does have a five-pole motor, so there's a good chance it will crawl. Well, well, are you ready? I'm turning up now. Still turning up. <laughs> Still turning up. Oh. I saw a little jump, and another, okay, all right, <laughs> and then it takes off at that sort of speed. Now this Loco has not been run in, so we will have to do that crawl test again later on before drawing a conclusion, but the crawl is pretty naff, isn't it really? Pretty naff lights, pretty naff crawl. Um, that could, well, the lights aren't going to get any better, are they? But the crawl could, so hold your horses on that. I am surprised that a five-pole motor is not performing a bit better than that at the slow speed, and there certainly doesn't seem to be anything binding, because, obviously, it's so incredibly smooth. The speed doesn't seem too high, which suggests that the gearing isn't to blame for that. So, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's a five-pole motor. Is it not such a great quality five-pole motor? I don't know. But I'm going to run it in. I'm going to set it to 50% speed and have it run round the layout first forwards and then backwards for half an hour each. And then when that is done, I will come back to you and we'll try the tests again. Okay, here we go. So the mid-speed performance is absolutely excellent. One of the best I've seen, incredibly smooth. As you saw there, uh, it's not too fast, and it certainly didn't slow down either on the curves, so that's great. The gearing looks actually really, really good. It's very quiet as well. There's certainly no noise as it goes around curves. There's no sort of gears touching the inner bodywork or whatever, uh, like we've seen before on occasion. 
The speed seems nice and constant. So yeah, overall the performance is looking promising. The lights though are absolutely rubbish. There's either a lot of distance between the lights themselves and the LEDs, or they are sort of old fashioned bulbs or something. <laughs> uh, you guys will know the answer. I, I still haven't done the strip down yet. I'll do that after running in. But overall, while it's definitely not at the same level as a modern diesel with this sort of price, the performance is good so far. It's not amazing, but it's good. And hopefully this will become even better after it's running. So we'll find out. Be back in just a second. Okay, folks, running in has completed and I am back. So that went perfectly well. It really did. A nice, smooth, quiet runner. Very, very consistent. I didn't see it slow down or anything on the curves. And it's also not too much of a fast runner either. It runs at a very, very sensible speed. I am now up to date with the mechanism and the innards of this loco. And so I am not scratching my head about anything anymore. Everything now makes sense. The lights looked rubbish because they're bulbs, <laughs> enough said. And the relatively convoluted gear train, as well as the overkill flywheels, are good reasons why this Loco might not have a lot of torque at the slow speeds. At least that was true before the Loco had run in, but now that the Loco has run in, let's try this again and see what the crawl is like now. So I'm going to do exactly the same as I did before, and just ease the Loco up on the controller. I'm still turning. It's looking similar so far, so a little bit of a jerk. And there we go, it's just taken off. Uh, not a very slow speed. And if I slow it down again, it does stall. Let's try that again. So I'm, I've started it and now I'm slowing down, see if we can descend into a crawl and it just sort of stalls. The other thing is there is not a lot of torque generally in the Loco. It is a very heavy model, but if I put my fingers in front of it and speed it up to 50% speed, you can see that the wheels are not actually turning. The loco is stalled there and I have to let go and it speeds up. So yeah, torque issues are unfortunate here. Really, you want a loco to be able to spin its wheels, wheel slip rather than stall. And the reasons for that are quite complicated, but basically when a motor has power to it, but it's not able to turn, the resistance of that motor drops. And it does that because it's not turning and it's not producing any back EMF. It's not producing any resistance to the power supply. And if you know Ohm's law, you know that uh, a reduction in resistance increases the current draw. And high current generally means high temperature and high temperature equals broken motors. So I've said this before, but any loco should have enough power to turn its rear wheels, even uh, when there is something stopping it from moving. It's just good practice. That's 50% speed. You can hear that buzzing. And I actually have to turn it up to about 70 before it starts to turn its wheels. So not great torque, unfortunately. Because of its weight though, the pulling power is really good. 0.84 Newtons, which is about 47 coaches on straight and level track. Of course, you shouldn't hook this up to 47 coaches because it slows right down to almost a stall at that sort of load. Uh, but still very impressive. And so I've set up six chocolate and cream coaches. I've gone with the sort of Western region theme. So I'm hoping this will couple up to those okay. I have fitted the coupling now and yeah, big surprise, even the coupling seems to be quality. It's not a nice coupling to put in. It's, you know, an annoying one. It's not a great coupling design even, but when it's in, the important thing is it seems to be level and uh, I'm, I'm expecting this thing to couple properly. The only thing is there's a bit too much tolerance on the coupling hook, so it does tend to flop left and right a little bit. So it's not a perfect coupling, but it's better than that banana-shaped coupling I saw on uh, one of the last Helgen Locos. It was the, the 17, wasn't it? <sighs> not good memories. Anyway, let's, uh, let's back this up and try and couple to the coaches. And there's a limit to how careful I can be in coupling this Loco because it doesn't crawl. I'm just, whoa. Yeah, it's just not ideal, is it, unfortunately, that you just you, you can't control it. At least you can't on analog. Anyway, let's try again. Let me see. Well, it's not going to be much better with a load, is it? But it's got such a load already with those flywheels and gears. Hopefully it won't be much worse. Here we go. Oh, that's not bad, but that is literally about it for the slow speed. Let's go a bit faster. There we go. So as you can see, yep, it's hauling a decent load. And then on the inside line, I've got another Hymek. This is my much older sort of 
Hornby Triangle. It's not a Triangle one, it's, uh, it's not quite as old as that. It's just the slightly later Hornby one, but still quite old fashioned. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Heldron one or the EFE Rail one definitely beats this one in every area, except perhaps value for money, I suppose. But off it goes. It's a bit grumpy, this one. But even it, coggy as that really is, can crawl better than the Heldron one. So definitely not every area. I was wrong in saying that. And then on the inside line, I thought, what better loco uh, to run alongside these two than another Western Region diesel? So I've got this one, this is the Dapol, I always forget the class of this, is it the 20, is it the 21, 29, I think it might be 29, but anyway, there we go, good runner this one, this one's quite a bit better than the Loco I've reviewed today, and look in the sidings, see if you can tell what the theme of today's Locos is, and see if you can spot an odd one out, a free cookie for anyone who guesses correctly, although that is a lie. Right, 50% speed then up Gordon's Hill, you can see no slowdown on the second radius, that's a really good result. And you can also see that this is 50% speed and yet it's running at a really, really sensible speed. So that is great. I would say at the medium or the higher speeds, this is a top class performer. Very, very good indeed. It's just a pity that it's so underwhelming down at the slow speeds. So if you're thinking of getting one of these, um, do consider what you look for in a performer. If you're not the sort that wants to sort of do really careful controlled couplings, if you just enjoy seeing them running at mainline speeds or whatever, then uh, yeah, the, the lack of slow speed control might not be a problem at all for you, in which case you don't have to consider that. If you like locos that perform well in an all-round sort of way, then uh, yeah, unfortunately this is not the greatest performer in the world, but then again, we've seen a lot worse. From this sort of distance though, it looks great, doesn't it? And I, I do think it's the decoration and the finish that really give it that edge. It's got a great presence on the track and it definitely looks the part, doesn't it? So it's got that going for it as well. Let's have some ratings then for the EFE Rail Class 35. And here are the scores, and like every loco really, there are good and bad in this. I have to say the quality is quite impressive to me. That is not one that I was expecting to be so high, but as you can see, it scored a well-deserving four star. But let's go back to the start and look at the level of detail. I mean, really, this is an old and basic loco and it shows, doesn't it? The lights are not very good at all. It might as well not have them, frankly. Very, very little in the way of special detailing, such as etched grills and that sort of thing. Plastic unsprung buffers. Yeah, it's a basic loco, no painted cab detail, for instance. Very, very basic loco. However, the 2.5 stars it does have are very well deserved because the decoration is second to none. And while the physical detailing definitely isn't modern by any stretch, the decoration I would say is, and that really saves it from any sort of distance. The performance is a three and a half star performance for me. I don't think it's quite bad enough to give it three, so I've given it an extra half a star because the higher and medium speed performance is absolutely wonderful, incredibly smooth and quiet, and it's actually very good around the curves and such, no slowing down or anything like that. It's just there is no torque at the slower speeds, and in fact, torque generally is quite a problem. Now, the Loco can run okay, absolutely fine, with this lack of torque, but if you hook it up with too much rolling stock, or if you run it too slowly, then the Loco really struggles to move itself, which isn't ideal. Again, I think the convoluted gear train and the overkill flywheels are probably to blame for that, but you know, I haven't proved it by any means. The pulling power itself though, particularly at the higher speeds, is very, very good indeed. 0.84 Newtons, which is around 47 coaches on straight and level track. Absolutely amazing pulling power because the Loco is so heavy at 500 grams. Now, I don't recommend you hook this thing up to 47 coaches because anywhere close to that, the motor is seriously slowing down and potentially even stalling, which is not good at all for a loco. Mechanism then. Uh, well, it's not a great mechanism, unfortunately. It does have some good in it. The five pole motor is pretty decent and uh, you can't deny that there's good intent behind those massive dual flywheels, but it does lose marks for the lack of serviceability. You know, it just needed some screws. It needed to be designed with the consumer in mind, not just with the factory in mind to get them out the door as cheap as possible. It needed proper bearings on the axles. A die-cast chassis for the wheels to sit into would have been better quality, I would have say. A less complex gear train was definitely needed. And for goodness sake, electric bulbs. 
LEDs have been the standard for, what, over a decade now. I can't understand why they're still manufacturing stuff like this. But quality though, overall, I'm gonna give four star. Overall, really, really good quality. Well built, well decorated. The packaging was really good quality as well, like phenomenally good, I would say. Give us some screws to hold the thing together rather than just cheap plastic clips. Uh, give us some proper bearings, cut the plastic details such as the unsprung plastic buffers, and this would definitely have been a five star on quality. Value for money then, the ROP is £159.95 and the, well, the retailer price I paid was £135.99. I take both of those prices into account in giving this two star. Yeah, unfortunately this is an old fashioned and basic model, which is absolutely fine. There is definitely a place in the market for this, but at the right price and I don't think £159.95 is the right price for this. At that sort of price, it should be much closer to modern locomotives, like the ones from Backman and other manufacturers, and the fact is it just isn't, unfortunately. And of course, Helgen's proposed upgraded Class 35 will need to be significantly better than this in order to justify its even higher price of £189.95 RRP, or £161.46 at the retailers. If everything I've identified is improved on the upgraded version, though, this could be considered good value, but we'll have to wait and see. Overall then, that is 6.05 out of 10. Yes, there's good in this loco, but there's a fair amount of disappointing in it as well, which does drag the score down a little bit. So let's put that into the logbook. Unfortunately, it is bottom, but then again, it's only bottom of eight locomotives. I would say I would be surprised if this made the bottom five of 2022, but there's a long way to go before we find out. So that is it for another EFE Rail review. I would say this is the best of the EFE Rail stuff I've looked at so far. Leaps and bounds better than the steamers I looked at, oh my god. But still got the issue of value for money here because this is not a very detailed loco. The mechanism is unremarkable and the performance is pretty underwhelming in areas, which does make that high price very, very confusing, unfortunately. And it does also mean that, yet again, you are not getting your money's worth, even at the retailer price here. Which is more or less what I expected, but it's still pretty unreasonable, if you ask me. More than anything else, though, it's just a missed opportunity. Models like this would do so, so well if they were reasonably priced for the low end of the market. But because this has been priced like a modern, super detailed loco, one of the few benefits to it has been lost. This model looks like a pretty cheap one to manufacture, so it really is a shame that the savings haven't been passed on to the customer in this case. But overall, there's quite a lot to celebrate. The high-speed performance, the quality of the build, those have surprised me, really. Very, very good. So there's definitely reasons to look into this Loco if you want a Class 35. For now, though, that is all I have to say on this review. I might revisit the Class 35 when Helgen bring out the updated one. If that's something you'd like to see, do comment down below and let me know. But for now, that is it. Thank you for watching. I enjoyed this, actually. Yeah, it's nice to see a quality loco for a change. It is quality overall, I'm going to say. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everybody.